chairman of the governing NPP, Stephen Ntiemis, this afternoon denouncing the activities of LGBTQ plus in Ghana. He insists that the party and its national executives will not stoop so low to opt for LGBTQI plus in the country. According to him, the party believes in the religious and cultural values that frown against the practice and will not go contrary to such beliefs. Mr. Ntim communicated the NPP's stance on the controversial issue at the one-year Thanksgiving service for the national executive. The good Lord wants us to continue populating this earth that he has put at our disposal. How do we achieve that commandment if you are going to resort to LGBTQ? You ask yourself. There's no way you can answer that question. And which means if we are going to opt for that, number one, it is contrary to the dictates of the good book, the Bible. It is in no uncertain terms. And it also means that if you are going to follow that route, then sooner or later, all of us will cease to exist because we cannot continue populating the world with human beings. I hope we are clear on this. Reverend ministers, we want you to continue praying for the new patriotic party and for Ghana that's standing here without any equivocation, denouncing the LGBTQ. Pray for us to continue upholding our cultural values. Let's say a drobejiwa eye atrema. You are NPP Chairman Stephen and team. A former vice chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Ernest Ait, is calling for transparency and proper regulation of lithium production in the country to derive the maximum benefits. According to him, transparency in the production of the mineral will minimize corruption and boost technology and innovation. Speaking at the national stakeholder dialogue on energy transition focus on lithium discovery in Ghana, um, Professor Anastaiti urged the current and future government to use the lithium deposits in the country to change the structure of the economy. Ghana is blessed with abundant lithium deposits across the country, including the Infantiman district of the central region. The mineral is used in rechargeable batteries for mobile phones, laptops, digital cameras, and electric vehicles. Speaking at the Institute for Energy Securities Organized Workshop, the former vice chancellor of the University of Ghana, Professor Aite, said, the country must do everything possible to ensure that governance and regulatory structures are put in place to derive enormous benefits from the mineral. We can make sure that the lithium benefits not only the government of Ghana or the companies that are going to be investing, but also the chiefs and people of the whole area and by extension to all Ghanaians. Now to the National Science and Maths Quiz and Maoli Senior High School cuts Keta SATS and Bishop Herman College to size, claiming a resounding victory and securing the prestigious Gold Voter OT Zona Regional Championship for the very first time for old students of the school to be the best homecoming week gift to them. My colleague Michael Ashali was there and now reports. <laughs> Senior High School, because this week also marks the homecoming, right, for the school. I mean, as old students, how does it feel? They were protesting our win, yes. but this is Maui. Yes. We are the best. And as we are marking our 10th um, year homecoming, this is just a great way to continue our Maui Senior High School. We say congratulations to Maoli School. End of jaw headline news are two with Maxwell Ababa. Seated right now is Norte by nature. <laughs> Maximum Maxwell. <laughs> Good to see you. And that was another M, Maoli. Yeah, yeah, Maoli School. Maoli Charlie, School. Charlie, yeah. Charlie, this, this, this quiz thing, eh? <laughs> yeah, the National Science and Maths quiz. Um, bringing out very... It's, it's, it's bega- becoming like some kind of by-election. <laughs> I said not to come. 
<laughs> you know, I'm, I'm I'm particularly amazed by you know the people who come out from National Science and Math schools where they go, where they end up. Many of them Ivy League schools. Which many of tracking, them tracking them exactly tracking the, their progress, getting them to come back. And to the actually, impact of this competition on yeah. national development, really. Yeah. Wow. It's it's a lot. Maximum, it's, 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 it's more than competition. Maximum max. Naughty by nature. <laughs> Thanks for the news. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Joy 99.7 FM. Yeah, great stuff. I guess you got to figure out where your school is. If they've been knocked out, uh, it's all good. It's all good. Another Sunday afternoon. My turn to burn. The program is called Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM. With me, Norte by nature. Right after maximum max. Bah, bah, bah. And you know I'm a lover of that Nungwa boy, yeah? The king called promise, eh? And this one just blows my mind. Because he did deliver past doctor. Right, the best auditory stimulation this side of the equator. It's called Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM. Right. If you want your peace of mind, you can get that with Virtual Security Africa. Visit them on www.virtualsecurityafrica.com or call them on 0558-740-764. They bring you ultimate health this and every Sunday, 205. Try and deliver past the doctors, eh? but I got a doctor in the studio. From one king promise to another, eh? my song bed. I, oh, I love that boy from Nungwa. Yeah, he promises, he delivers, and he's always clean. Eh? In the studio, well, I got another doctor. You, you, you know I don't know whether he's a Terminator. Doctor Peku of the Veterinary Services Di- Directorate. 
the Metro Veterinary Officer for Tema. He joins us in the studio as we talk about anthrax and more all about anthrax disease your own ultimate health joy 99.7 fm we're talking about anthrax uh, the, the latter parts of may uh 2023 the ministry of uh, food and agriculture and the ghana health service declared uh reports and confirmation of an anthrax outbreak in the upper east if i'm right binduri and talency yep uh let's say roughly about a month onwards um they lifted the ban they imposed subsequently imposed so the ban was on the movement of ruminants cattle and all that uh within that area and beyond that coincided with the observation of the ramadan where we're particularly concerned about animals, their health and uh, food safety, right? So today we're going to be learning about anthrax, what it is, right? Uh, how it affects us, how it affects animals, what was done specifically to contain the outbreak and how assured can we be that we're safe and what are the measures and directives put in place? So Dr. Peku, you're most welcome. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, I'm on a high high note. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, Thank you for having us. Right, great, second. great, great. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've I've been looking into the functions and the mandate of the VSD. Yeah. There's so many things that the Veterinary Services Directorate is supposed to be doing to protect us. Yeah. And from time to time, I'll be yanking you and other representatives to educate us on the things you do to protect us. But let's stick to anthrax. Yeah. And uh, I know it's a bacterial infection quite rare but severe mm. can you bring us to speed on what it is okay thank you so much once again and good afternoon Joy. to all your cherished listeners mm -hmm. so anthrax is one of the zoonotic diseases mm -hmm. and um, if i say zoonotic the, these are diseases that can move from animals to humans okay. and anthrax is one right and um it it runs a very short course so um Medically, we, we say it's, it's a per acute, acute mm -hmm. inf infection, meaning that when, when you have the infection, it takes, uh, it can take several, uh, some few hours to maximum two to three weeks, and then um, the clinical sign starts. Okay. Anthrax is also caused by a bacteria that is caused uh, that is called the ba uh, Bacillus anthracis. Right. And I say that this is one one of the rare bacteria you can never have because because of the nature. It actually exists in two forms. Right. A vegetative form, which is an infective form, which normally is in a human being or, or an animal. Okay. And then once it comes out, vegetative means it's active. Yes. Right. And it's causing the it's causing disease. It's causing the disease and the symptoms. Yeah, okay. exactly. Once it moves out, there's a protective covering that covers the bacterial or it changes its form mm -hmm. and have a protective covering, which is called the spores. The spore. That's right. And that is what um, persists in the environment for several years, even up to 100 years. Right. So I, my reading tells me that these spores are present normally in the soil and stuff around us. Exactly. Right. And this, in this form, yeah. right, in the spore form, it can last for decades. For decades. In the soil. And that means that uh, the kind of animals we are concerned about yeah. are normally exposed to this. Exactly. Or, or potentially exposed to this. Exactly. Okay. So that the spores preserve the organism in an inactive form, and one um, um, one thing is that the, the spore is very resistant to harsh environmental conditions, okay. disinfectants, especially when it gets um, a soil that has a pH, or maybe we we call them the alkaline soils. Okay, a pH from about five to about nine is very comfortable, and it stays there. Okay, and it's waiting for. A host to enter. All right. So once you have um, probably rains or animals are grazing very low, mm -hmm. gra gra grazing very low, okay, and they get in contact, the spore either enters through their mouth, either through their no nostrils, okay, or sometimes if you have a break of skin, especially in 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 uh, a break of skin, right, these spores can enter. Okay. So essentially. 
one thing we're learning here is that we yeah. should be concerned about where these animals are grazing, mm -hmm. the conditions prevalent in those areas, and particularly from what you're saying, yeah. during uh, maybe certain seasons where the conditions are more conducive for these sports to now transmit or move to a host. Exactly. Okay. So when once they they are rains or probably the grace low. So you, you can see the trend that uh, these outbreaks mostly come um, when uh, the onset of the raining season, when probably they are flooding and, and all that. Okay. So it carries it. And then um, when probably these animals are um, having their water in co communal, may, may, maybe streams right. or something, okay. they pick the spores. Okay. But these spores are normally uh, come into the environment when um, an animal... Um, dies of it and maybe accidentally someone op opens the animal you have a lot of these spores coming okay or when you have um, um, a, an active case normally when they die you have uh, fluids um, right. coming out from their orifices okay it can be their nose their mouth their um, anus and all that okay so while once it happens that from the spectrum, sorry. So once it happens that way, it contaminates the soil ar around, around that place. Okay. And once the the vegetative form is exposed to air, the the spores are formed. Okay. Yeah. Great. If you just joined us, 16 minutes past the hour of two, on Joy 99.7 FM. My name is Norte by Nature. I host Ultimate Health here every Sunday, 205, brought to you by Virtual Security Africa. I'll tell you a bit about them in a second. We're in the studio with Dr. Peku from the Tema. Uh, Veterinary Services uh, Directorate is the Metropolitan Officer for the Tema area. And uh, we're talking about the recent anthrax outbreak in the Upper East region. It's been controlled. I'll read out the Ministry of uh, uh, Food and Agriculture's uh, press release lifting the ban. But we need to learn about anthrax and convince ourselves that we are safe and then also be party and privy to all the precautionary measures that and directives that have been put in place. If you have any questions, concerns, uh, we're live on Facebook and YouTube, and you could WhatsApp us on 055-1111-997, and shortly I will activate the phone line so you can uh, ask the questions directly yourself. Now, sure. remember, yeah, Ultimate Health is brought to you by Virtual Security Africa, a Ghanaian company with 15 years experience in providing integrated electronic security solutions such as CCTV, access control, intruder alarm, fire alarm, electric fences, and many more. VCA provides cutting-edge solutions to meet the security needs of its customers with lifetime after-sales support. You can locate them in Accra, Tessa, or behind Alive Chapel, their showroom at Joulu First Floor, Nana Adepa Plaza, uh, Kumase, Santasi Roundabout, opposite the Goyal Fuel Station, and in Takrade on the Kintampo Road. Visit them at www.virtualsecurityafrica.com or call them on 050-331-4068 or 055-851-9839. VSA, Virtual Security Africa. They bring you ultimate health. Listen every Sunday at 2.05. Right. Coming back in the studio, uh, so we understand these are the conditions yeah. that can give rise to an anthrax outbreak. Yeah. Okay. Um, let me try and get an understanding. So let's say this process has taken place and an animal or animals have become contaminated or infected yeah. with these spores. How will the farmer or the handlers, the keepers of these animals know that these animals have anthrax before we get to diagnosis and all yeah. that? Yeah, thank you so much. So, um, one key thing about anthrax is that so once the spore goes inside, mm -hmm. it, it releases or it germinates and becomes the the vegetative form or mm -hmm. the infective form comes. And then now it, it, it affects almost every system of the body. And particularly, depending on where the, uh, the spore passed, it, it will present a, a, a specific clinical sign. Okay. So one thing is that it runs a very short course. So once um, um, an animal Can dies... You just break that? Now, when you say it runs a short course, are you saying that the symptoms will show quickly? Quickly. Okay. So we have a pair acute form where if an animal takes their spore, mm -hmm. it can take like six, sure. ten hours and the an animal dies. Okay. So in that case, you have a very big animal 
uh, very most most of the time you have the booths, the big ones, those that pro- pro- probably uh, take a lot of food at a time. Okay, you know how cattle they feed. Right. They 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 use their tongue. They are not so selective right. in picking. Like unlike the they pick everything and then uh, uh, everything. the digestive so, system has to handle it and exactly, take out the nutrients. Exactly. Right. Okay. So once they pick, so mostly it happens to very fat animals and and all that. So once they pick, um, within about six ten hours. That particular animal is dead. Wow. So, so most of the time, um, anthrax is characterized by sudden death. An animal is very healthy, and then within the next few hours or next few days, okay, the an- animal dies. Right. And once the animal dies, it's 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 we have something we call septicemia. So right. the bacteria uh, move through the cells and it spreads throughout the whole body. Right. So a process of infection exactly. within the body or the carcass of this dead animal. Exactly. Right. And because of that one, um, it causes hemolysis of the, the blood, um, the vessels, the blood cells and, and all that. So at the end of the day, you have blood oozing out from the natural or- orifices okay. from, the, from the mouth. It can come f- f- from the rectum. Or it can come from va- so you various have, you places. you have fluids and other things from the dead animal the carcass As, exactly right releasing more of the spores That's, so it releases the vegetative form right and then once it comes out air it, it, it needs air to act to help it form the spore okay right Good. so by releasing these fluids yeah. right into the environment it contaminates the area ar- around where the animal right. stays and then also the spores become active so the spore is inactive, inactive. and that's okay. yes and it can stay in the environment for several years okie dokie so yeah. this poses a risk to humans within close proximity handling these animals exactly uh, other animals exactly and other sources of grazing and what fluids or water for these animals feed etc yes okie dokie yeah so once you see that most of the time these carcasses will, will, will bloat or become quite big right and then one, one key thing about anthrax is that normally the clotting factors are destroyed so most of these fluids that will come out right. the blood will not clot right so the blood is still fresh okay so once the contamination comes so assuming somebody goes and probably is going to probably di- dissect or comes in contact okay with 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 such fluids if he has a cut he can have the c- cutaneous form yeah. if probably he consumes the meat you, you have, have the enteric gastro- form oh, right. exactly and then, then once the hit. spore is formed you can in fact the spore can be formed after an hour or even more depending okay. on so you can also inhale it exactly we'll come to the types in a sec thank yeah. you doc uh, if you just joined us 22 minutes past the hour of Two on Joy 99.7 FM. We're talking about anthrax in uh, the wake of the recent, uh, thankfully well controlled outbreak in the yeah. Upper East region. I have a veterinary doctor in the studio, Dr. Peku. He's with us. Uh, uh, let me take a, a, a word from my sponsors, Virtual Security Africa. And when we come back, I will read the uh, press release from the Ministry of Food and Agriculture lifting the ban and then more importantly emphasize the directives and then we'll put our discussion in context. If you want to WhatsApp us 055 11 11 This is Ultimate, Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM live on Facebook and YouTube. Stick and stay. Virtual Security Africa is your number one provider of a complete integrated electronic security solutions and services in Ghana and Africa. Trust me, from CCTV surveillance, access control systems, intruder and panic alarms, fire alarm systems, physical security and inspection systems such as x-ray scanners, vehicle boom barriers, road blockers, etc. And they even have public address and intercom systems and many other facilities for your home's office and even large enterprises. VSA offers a lifetime after sales support. Call VSA today on 0548-740-764 or visit their showroom at Nana at the Pa Plaza, Jolu, opposite the UBA or visit their website at www.virtualsecurityafrica.com. Virtual Security Africa, complete security solutions. 
Joy 99.7 FM. Hey, welcome back to Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM with me, Naughty by Nature. We're talking about anthrax. Any questions, concerns about the food, the meat you consume, its safety in the wake of this uh, controlled outbreak uh you can whatsapp us on 055 we're live on facebook and youtube in the studio with me i have dr peku from the uh, metro office of the vsd veterinary services department uh to take your questions okay let me just quickly read out the um statement from the ministry of food and agriculture lifting of ban on the movement of ruminants and donkeys slaughtering seed products in the binduri district of the upper east region this followed reports and confirmed cases of anthrax an acute bacterial disease transferable from animals to humans the situation has since been contained with no record no recorded case of the disease since the 14th of june in the view of the above and based on expert advice the ban on the movement of ruminants da, 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 uh, in the upper east region is hereby lifted today tuesday 11th of july 2023 notwithstanding this directive that the lifting the following measures will apply and be strictly enforced the slaughter of animals should be under close supervision of the veterinary and environmental health officers at designated abattoirs and slaughter slabs We'll get a sense of what that means. Food vendors, restaurants, owners, butchers will be arrested and prosecuted for the sale of meat and meat products of animals whose slaughtering was not supervised by the officers specified above. Uh, all dead animals should be promptly reported to the veterinary or environmental health officers as well as people in authority for immediate investigation at all costs, the public is advised to desist from eating the, an, eating the meat of animals found dead. As a precautionary and proactive action, the following activities will continue, which means they are already in force, right? Vaccination of animals against the anthrax disease, intensification of surveillance of animal and human anthrax cases, and sensitization of the general public on the prevention of anthrax. The ministry takes the opportunity to thank all stakeholders for supporting the relentless effort to bring the anthrax disease under control and urge the sustenance of the spirit of cooperation. Signed by the Minister uh, of Food and Agriculture, Brian Achampon. Okay, so back in the studio, uh, Doc. So these are the uh, actions that were taken. Yeah. With regard to the outbreak, I do recall a certain number of animals died. Yeah. And then a certain number were considered uh, infected, yeah. right? And then there was one confirmed human casualty. Can you just yeah. update us on those? Okay. So um, so we, we have um, almost about um, 13 to 15 districts that um, had um, the cases. Okay. Um, so we, we have um, 13 human involvement, mm -hmm. which one, one died. Right. But regarding the animals, we have eight confirmed cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we had more s suspected cases. Mm -hmm. But as at um, the 13th of June, they had confirmed eight cases. And all these cases were in, in bovine or cattle. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the 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 trend, it's, it's actually... It's, it's, it, it's all the cases were actually in, 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 in bovine or in, in cattle. Right. But that, that doesn't mean that um, um, it's only cattle that can get it. Okay. You have um, sheep, goats, um, 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 ho horses, mm. pigs, and, and all that. Okay. Also susceptible to the uh, anthrax. Um, okay. Um, um, yeah, Let me just organism. confirm for my listeners. Uh, welcome. Uh, oh, yeah, I see you, you're on live. Many thanks for staying with us uh we're live on facebook and youtube whatsapp is 055 11 11 997 any questions you have about meat you consume how will you know if the animal uh from which that meat came uh, has been vaccinated and is safe etc etc right in other parts of the world you see a certain stamp on meat products and other yeah. things uh i don't know what pertains here we'll get into that in a sec right uh and of course good afternoon to my good good buddy richard uh, richard or say anani yeah, like you said, life is short. Eh? Enjoy to the max, my brother. Okay, so so we've got these details. Yeah. You mentioned thirteen human impacts. Yeah, one 
fatality yeah confirmed to be due to anthrax yes okay so, so um looking at the 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 history um our co colleagues gave us so they, they were wor wor working in a community um where they actually heard that uh, uh, two people have been rushed to a near, nearby ho hospital okay for consuming um a dead carcass okay and they, they have swellings and then they have other swellings on their faces so they took advantage of the death of this carcass they didn't exactly. want to waste the meat yes and proceeded exactly you, you know um anthrax will always, always most of the time affects very very huge animals right that's probably you wouldn't want it's to not throw away. exactly so you still want and and sometimes if you go to the co communities they believe that they have concussions to be able to, to protect themselves protect themselves but they don't know that in fact there are so many diseases that can present itself like anthrax right it could be snake bite it could be light lightning strike it could be other bacteria okay. they, they, that will present it, itself in a similar way right so sometimes when when they consume those meat and n nothing happens they feel that uh, it's it's same like anthrax but was, for anthrax, was that the case for all the 13 human cases were, were they related to this one dead carcass no so so um, um because the reason i'm asking this yeah. just for better clarity when you're responding exactly is that i know you can't get it from person to person yes okay yes. it's not contagious in that way yes right but you can have it pass from animal to human exactly but i can't give it to you if i have it yes that's my understanding yes so the other human cases they they so they, they these were all people that um consume the meat okay uh -huh. so um so these first two were rushed and uh, thankfully oh, one was saved mm. uh, but the other passed on okay. you know i said it depends on how severity yeah. and the amount of the bacteria you take in okay and all that so um and and uh, and of course it's due to the prompt response from also from the ghana health service in fact they also they did very well by managing the people so does this suggest that we must have yeah in place and from the the press release and the response and the control uh, outcome yeah. we must have a very robust surveillance system people must be speaking to your directorate must be speaking to the health authorities and so on and so forth. these must be reported yeah in fact i i always say that let me commend the the officials in the areas talency and the districts involved yeah. because obviously not only was it re reported but there was a prompt response exactly. especially and particularly at the time of the ramadan uh, celebrations approaching and uh, restricting the movement slaughter and so on and so forth and consumption of meat products yeah oh in, in fact I, I must say that um our colleagues so so you can see that the one health concept really um um um, worked well. work very well with, with this very case mm. because you have people from veterinary services, the environmental, um, the medics and all that. They mm. all came together and, mm. and the other partners, the mm. RCC, the media and all that. Okay. They all played very key role in, in containment of the, the, the antra. So you, you, you can see in the front lines where the environmental health services are helping to probably excavate and then dig okay. and then and, and bury these cars and samples were taken by a lot of contact tracing was actually carried out yeah i'll come to those in a sec exactly. right let me just make sure that my listeners know that they are involved in this we're live on uh, whatsapp 055 we can take your questions experiences concerns um we're also live on facebook and youtube and uh, let me activate the phone line 0302 you can call in and ask your questions but let me ask this because this is a serious thing indeed in 2000 or 2001 uh, it was used in bioterrorism yeah. in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Some letters were mailed to some specific uh, prominent people which were infected deliberately with the anthrax spores. Spore, yeah. Okay, They yeah. managed to avert or control yeah. many of these things. So we're not joking with something uh, insignificant. This mm. is a big thing. If, if if allowed to you know spread mm. and contaminate or infect animals mm. and human beings so mm. we're not joking with this at all, at all. i also read uh, in my research that you know people export animal animal hides skins and so on and even those who make drums yeah and instruments with animal uh, skin yeah right have mm. been exposed in yeah. some countries yeah so this is a serious thing and it's not just the consumption no. or rearing of livestock it's very very serious yeah okay 
Right. So we've got these cases. We've talked about the response of the system. Yeah. Okay. We know you can get it through a skin lesion. Yeah. Right. That's the cutaneous type. So, yeah. You can consume and yeah. get a gastrointestinal or is it Form? enteric? Yeah, it's same. It's the same thing. So enteric. in the same way you are taking yeah. in the spore, it becomes spore. active. Exactly. And then you can also inhale. Yes. Whoa. And that was what was used in the biotech terrorism act and right. you, you if you read that story very well about five people died yep and um, I, I must say that if, if you look at the anthrax itself mm. it needs a collective effort to be able to contain it and one good thing that we have is that, okay though we've not got into the prevention yeah but um, the veterinary services has a lab that produces this vaccine in the country. Right. And but that was the the, the vaccine that they we used to contain. We are able. It. We have the capacity, capacity to produce, to produce. The, uh, anthrax vaccine. Exactly. For both humans and uh, animals. No, it's for animals specifically. Right. But there is a vaccine for humans. Yes. Yeah, so now. And the then an antitoxin. Exactly. Right. So you know that the concentration now is on the on the animal, on the animal aspects right. because the, 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 these are where we get the infection from okay so um um one key thing that is really hindering uh the the, the control mm -hmm. is basically when it comes to lo logistics wise okay in fact most of of the time when you are um w we w we should have a set up fund for some of these emergencies in fact if you look at what our, our colleagues did in the back in the upper, upper east right a lot of people had to do sacrificial job to be able to contain this okay working in community sometimes without probably fuel and other things but they needed to save well, lives we got it on the hand we'll come to those yeah. in a bit right again let me uh, uh announce the phone line is active zero three zero two two one six five four when we're talking about anthrax and the recent in the wake of the recent anthrax outbreak in the upper east region Thankfully, it has been controlled. The ban on the movement, sales, slaughter, consumption of uh, animals in that district uh, has been lifted by the designated Ministry of uh, Food and Agriculture. And um, we're looking at the directives and instructions that are supposed to be adhered to and enforced. Particularly and specifically, let me read the part which says that um, owners food vendors, restaurants, owners, butchers will be arrested and prosecuted for the sale of meat and meat products uh, of animals whose slaughtering was not supervised. Yeah. Okay? I'll come to that and the capacity because already uh, Dr. Peku is going into the area of uh, constrained uh, resources and we'll talk about that. If you have any questions, concerns, share with me. How do you know that the meat you patronize or the butcher's shop uh, or facility you patronize is observing all of these. Of course, you don't know where the meat came from. You ask for pork, you ask for beef, or whatever, it's there. Uh, you're interested in the, the, the weight and the, the price, okay? And so how do you know these things, and how does the VSD, alongside other agencies, protect you? If you have any questions, concerns, you can call us 030-221-6541 or WhatsApp us on 055-1111-997. Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM. Joy. Okay, Doc, so yeah. we've got these things happening, right? So in the case of the Binduri outbreak, the recent outbreak, mm -hmm. a report must have been made. Yeah. We, how do we confirm that it is anthrax? You mentioned lightning, snake bites, and other things that can happen to animals and cause them to die abruptly, yeah. right? Um, how is it confirmed? I know there must be a robust laboratory response okay. how is it confirmed thank you so much so the first thing that we look at is the Joy. history the sequence of death okay how and then uh, secondly samples are taken normally we, we, we don't open an anthrax or a dead carcass okay if it's a livestock we, we have to do an anthrax um, test first okay so a blood is taken um from probably the jugular vein or sometimes we do a small incision on the facial vein take okay. blood we do microscopy and now can I can I assume for yeah. on the on behalf of my listeners, can I assume that you've taken possession of this carcass? Yes. So you will go and 
take this carcass. No, okay. So oh. now, what we, we we always advise is that if an animal dies, right, you don't move the animal, especially okay. when it is cattle, sheep, goat, pigs. You, you don't okay. move it, because assuming it's a positive case, wherever you move it, mm. you, you spread. Okay, you don't the, move it, you don't exactly, bury it. Exactly. Okay. So what we do is that we take the sample first. Okay. And then um, once we take the sample, we have our two tests that we can do. We, do, we we have a normal mi microscopy test that we we, we do, okay. and then uh, it's a laboratory based laboratory test. You're based not coming there with a, a rapid test on the scene. No, you have to take the sample to a take lab. Take sample, yes. Okay, right. And then we we also do a PCR, which which, which is a molecular test to be able to to confirm. Okay. So these are the two things. How we quickly actually can do. that be done, and how quickly uh, can you tell us that was done in this instance? For so example? that is the challenge. So um, if in fact, the normal microscopy can take uh, maximum probably 30 minutes for, okay. for you to finish the test. All right. Um, yeah, 30, 40 minutes, you should be done. The PCR can take about two, three hours, depending okay. on the, how um, so the process So you should be able goes. to confirm with, a within diagnosis a day. of anthrax within hours? Yes, with within all hours. things being good? Yes, with, with all things being equal. Okay. Yeah, but the problem will now come to um, the capacity of our labs because as it is now, um, it's only Pont Tamale and few other labs, Pont Tamale, Accra, uh, Kumase, that can confirm. So we have very few labs across the country that can confirm. Exactly. Okay, so whatever it is means that from whichever site, this sample must be transported, transported very quickly. Exactly. Because of the potential of an outbreak and a spread. Exactly. Right? To exactly. A lab, a lab with the capacity. Yes. Right. Okay. Now, in cases like the Bindu and that um, oh, yeah, Napa East case, once you have a history of a sudden death, mm. once even you take the sample, um, the appropriate me measures are put in place. Right. No, nobody is allowed to touch the carcass. Um, we, we are not allowed to open the carcass, and if possible, at least we, we have to dig as soon as possible because now. You cannot consume. You have dead. to bury that carcass. You, you have to Once bury. you've taken the sample, uh, the sample. Exactly. What happens to the other animals, the human beings on site? Do you lock down the place? Does it become a ground zero? What happens? Okay. So once you you dig, we we, we advise oh, that you dig no yeah. less than six feet. Who digs? So that is also another challenge. Right. They have to employ people to dig or they have to use an excavator, but it depends on the availability. So is that the responsibility of the responding agencies? Yes. So if you look at the One Health team, the, the assembly and all these people, all the stakeholders, they are supposed to support. Okay. So that is why we so are I saying the that... the farmer, the owner cannot dispose of this animal or bury it. In fact, anthrax is one of the reportable diseases, and such disease it becomes a national concern. That is why I'm pre proceeding from the point that yes. this has been confirmed, it yes. has been identified. Yes. I'm looking at the subsequent responses. Exactly. So, yes, I'm a farmer, I'm a uh, private person, I own this animal, yes. right? Uh, anthrax has been confirmed. Yes. What is supposed to be the responsibility of the agencies? I know we have One Health, they're yes. supposed to cooperate. What is supposed to happen? Yes, so appropriate com com communication is carried out because one, the farmer oh, cannot yeah, use the animal. Okay. And once the animal is safely buried, mm. what is supposed to be done next is probably sensitize the whole community. Okay. And then we do what we call a ring vaccination, not less than eight kilometers radius from the place where the, uh, the incidents happen. Okay. Or Eight kilometers radius because that is the distance animals can no, no, normally go. So what go you're in. saying, yeah. Doc Peku, yeah. is that you're going to vaccinate animals within a specified radius, radius of where the case was identified and confirmed as soon as possible of all animals. Yes, as soon as, as possible. possible. Right. In the ideal case, how, what does this mean? How soon? Yes. Yeah, so, so forget the, about the fact that you may not have resources and capacity. In the ideal case, what should happen? So. In the uh, ID case, it's the same thing that should happen. So that is why Antras, you, no, you don't even no, wait. No. What, what you're yeah. not getting, I'm saying you said as soon as possible. Yeah. I want to specify that now. If we're really serious about containing this, we've been successful, Yeah. right? We've announced a lift of the ban. Yeah. So we as laypersons assume we're safe. 
Yeah. Right? Persons in Binduri district and so on assume they're safe, mm -hmm. right? And that the the scare or the spread, let me use the words properly, yeah. the spread or the outbreak has been successfully averted and controlled. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I'm, I'm asking what would be done and what has been done. So in the ideal case, how quickly should this response be? Because I know some people have, um, what do they call them now? Animals are roam and go and graze. Yes. Far afield. Mm. And then they are brought mm. back home. Mm. Right? Yeah. And so you do your eight kilometers or whatever. So that's why I'm asking about this. Okay. So the uh, ideal situation is that anthrax vaccination should be done every year. Okay. So wh whether we have an outbreak or not, we should be vaccinating the vaccination animals. should yes. Okay. So if you look at the recommendation as part of the on on ongoing process, they are still vaccinating animals within the region and be beyond. Okay. So all these things, and then now you you, you can ensure, confirm that is ongoing. Yes, it's right. ongoing. If you're listening if to us going, and yeah. you're anywhere uh, in the upper east and other areas just let me know if you are aware of any vaccination going on let me quickly read this from francis hayford in bato good afternoon naughty please how are you and the doc please ask the doctor that what is the lifespan or the temperature at which the bacteria live even with when the meat of the affected carcass is not well cooked is it still alive i know there's a danger when it is poorly or undercooked uh, doc can explain that in the environment uh, we've said it it can live for 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 years decades, for years, decades okay yeah. that's where the danger is if you have any questions concerns whatsapp is 055-1111-997 11 greetings mr norte dua and ultimate health team please what happened to a lion what happened to a lion after eating meat a lion okay infected with anthrax please what brought about the swollen faces of the humans okay this is from papa solo or pa solo in sunyane uh, he seems to know something happened to the human cases yeah. i don't know doc mm -hmm. will address that thank you papa so, uh, solo in sunyane this is from eric it says hello ultimate health i have two questions for the discussion with the bacteria being in the soil, is it possible for it to enter and contaminate our water bodies? I think we mentioned water yeah. sources, uh, both surface and underground. If stray dogs eat the carcass of the infected animal, can they transmit the disease to human beings? Doc, can you take these questions? Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. So let me start from the the, the, the very last one. Yeah. So um, sure. if a dog I goes to consume the carcass, mm -hmm. We have very rare cases where, but the dog can also contract it. Okay. Now, the water bodies, we, we, we've said... Did you say said, that, that would be rare? Yes. So, you have um, every organism needs a particular re receptor for it to be... Okay. But we have cases... It's not impossible. It's, yes. Okay. It's not impossible. Yes, rare. We, yes. Okay. Understood. But you have cases. So, just like the lion, you, you have cases of these animals when when they consume the carcasses okay. they, they they can also get it but right. depending on the time that the consumption went on because a lion yeah. going hunting is not going to check with the vsd so, whether so the, the exactly <laughs> because if you look at even lions normally they only even go for dead animals right. they only want, want to prey on them but okay. I, I probably wanted to find out if these carnivores probably eat which is very possible and then there was another question Swollen faces exactly so the the bacteria produces um about three types of toxins mm. we, we have one we call the edema factor mm -hmm. whereby once it enters the cell it it allows uh, it causes a lot of fluid to seep into the cells and that accounts for the the swollen faces so edema, or the edema. swelling exactly. or inflammation exactly right so okay. water gushes out of the cells and then now it's in the subcutaneous tissue in fact okay. that's one of the classical signs of the how the toxins presents itself okay. what's the, the the pathogenesis of the toxins right yeah. okay yeah. Right. If you have any questions, concerns, 48 minutes past the hour of two, we have about 12 minutes to go on Ultimate Health, brought to you by Virtual Security Africa, a Ghanaian company with 15 years' experience in providing integrated electronic security solutions such as CCTV, access control, intruder alarm, fire alarm, electronic fence, and many more. They provide cutting-edge solutions to meet the security needs of their clients with lifetime after-sales support. You can locate them in Accra, Tessano, behind their live chapel. They have a showroom at Jolu, first floor, Nana at the Park Plaza in Kumasi, they are at the Santasi, Santasi roundabout opposite the Goyal Fuel Station and Takradi uh, on the Kintampo Road. You can visit them at www.virtualsecurityafrica.com or call them on 055 050 331 
4068 or 055 They bring you ultimate health this and every Sunday at 205. Virtual Security Africa is your number one provider of a complete integrated electronic security solutions and services in Ghana and Africa. Trust me, from CCTV surveillance, access control systems, intruder and panic alarms, fire alarm systems, physical security and inspection systems such as x-ray scanners, vehicle boom barriers, road blockers, etc. And they even have public address and intercom systems and many other facilities for your home's offices and even large enterprises. VSA offers a lifetime after sales support. Call VSA today on 0548-740-764 or visit their showroom at Nana Adepa Plaza, Jolu, opposite the UBA or visit their website at www.virtualsecurityafrica.com. Virtual Security Africa, complete security solutions. That's right, Ultimate Health on Joy 99.7 FM. If it impacts on your health and your well-being, we'll talk about it this and every Sunday, 205, courtesy Virtual Security Africa. We're talking about anthrax. This one says, Norte, you are scaring me, oh, because I thought dog meat was safe. Hey, my BBQ or barbecue dog meat, please confirm if it's safe or not. Dog meat, doc. Yeah, so we already said um, 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 dog meat it's not re really safe. Can you tie that in with whether uh, the, the vaccine uh, is still active when food has been cooked? Good. So I, I, I wanted even to start from there. So yeah. remember that we said the spores is very resistant to mm. heat, okay. extreme temperature. So okay. once the spores are for you can cook the meat, mm -hmm. the spores may still be active. Okay. And that, that is what happens to these people um, that actually died. So what we are saying is that when an, an animal dies, it's a no, no, no. We shouldn't consume such an animal, okay. especially uh, when we, we don't actually know what actually killed the animal. Okay. Yeah. Whether barbecued, spiced, you, boiled, and That is grilled. even the danger. All right. Because barbecue, you don't have the heat entering. And the, 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 the spore can withstand over 100 degrees and it's still active. Okay. It's, it's inactive, but once it goes in to you, right. the vegetative okay. form comes Part out. of my reading also revealed some concern in other parts of the world yeah. about insects and insect bites and exactly. anthrax. And then exactly. anthrax and uh, uh, drug-injecting uh, individuals. Individuals, right? Yeah. With regard to anthrax through needle yeah. infection. Yeah. Can you yeah. comment quickly on those? Okay, very good. So normally um, in the active or the septic form, mm -hmm. let's take it an animal gets uh, the infection now, mm -hmm. maybe in the ne next um, few days mm -hmm. or uh, hours, the bacteria ma Joy multiplies in the body. Okay. So when that one ha happens, we have these biting ins insects that can suck blood. They pick some of the vegetative form or okay. the active form. And then when they come, to bite you, especially the cutaneous form. Right. So that that is how is the, the cutaneous form can be actually be spread, and it has right. been confirmed in mo most countries where you have this. Um, active cases going on that some of these flies have contributed but okay. it's mostly the cutaneous the skin type okay yeah. right okay if you have any questions concerns uh whatsapp is 055 11 11 997 this serious business and the phone line is 030 we're live on facebook and youtube all right so let's come to some of the uh, other uh, issues yeah. very quickly on treatment, we yeah. talked about what happens with regard to uh, human beings, right? Yeah. If they have symptoms, they are handled in a hospital facility. Mm. Uh, since it's bacterial, I would presume treatment would consist of or involve antibiotics. Yes. So if you look at the management, but one key thing is that it runs a very short course. Okay. So sometimes the animal, the person or the animal dies. Uh -huh before even you see the sign okay so um, in cases like this there, there are antibiotics mm -hmm. uh, protocols that you, you are, they, they actually follow okay. because it's a gram positive bacteria there are specific antibiotics that you can use okay. with other management and right. it comes with a lot of pain because especially the the pulmonary form there's difficulty in breathing and, and all your lungs that exactly and there's edema water uh, fluid gash out comes into your lungs and those are the things that have actually killed them okay because of the toxins so it's not something you're going to be buying antibiotics no over the counter and saying you're, no. you're treating it it will kill it before 
even the uh, so you need to quickly that is why as part of the surveillance once you probably handle meat or you eat in anything you, you have to quickly go to the nearest hospital okay. for them to manage you so doc you you handle animals you work in the field there are yeah. other people who handle and work closely with animals or animal products yeah should such people be routinely vaccinated against anthrax yeah, so if you look at the protocol in endemic a areas like the northern part of the country, mm -hmm. it would have been good. But as it is now, um, you don't have the human vaccines in the country. But I think that the key thing that we have now is to vaccinate our animals right. and ensure that when we are um, um, uh, probably slaughtering and all that, we wear protective cl clothing, okay. which is very key. And I must mention that... Um, if you look at our slaughter facilities, mm -hmm. ideally we are supposed to have something we call a holding pen, which is called a larage. Right. When, when these animals can be observed for some of these signs, because normally when they, they have anthrax, mm. the first thing that you may see is probably a, a sharp rise in temperature. Okay. And that can be detected and, and picked. So you should actually be observing and examining animals presented for slaughter. Exactly. And it, therefore, there should be an officer with the requisite skill and training and qualification yeah. cited at these slaughter points. Yes. In fact, all, all the slaughter points or the slaughter facilities that we have in the country, we are supposed to have a veterinary officer there, a technician there. Emphasis on supposed to. Yes. So... Do they we, they, do they we, are do they are them? oh yes they are in every, every part of the country but the one how thing many, is that how many slaughter points do you have in let's say tema tema um tema we have one um we have the gihok we have the Accra Abatwa, and then we have a slaughter slab in in so the enclave what, what do we mean by a slaughter slab okay so we we have the slaughter slab is just a simple facility that can slaughter just about 10 to 15 animals in a day Okay. Then you have a slaughterhouse. So these must be licensed, registered. Or yes, it's registered. Just community spots. Right? No, it's pre pre registered. Okay. Yeah, and then the the slaughterhouse can slaughter maximum of fifty, and the um, abattoir can do more. Okay. Maybe hundred. So it depends on the facility that is available. Okay. Yeah. Now the directive says that slaughter of animals should be under close supervision of the veterinary and environmental health officers at designated abattoirs and slaughter slabs yes does this mean that you cannot you should not you must not slaughter animals at home or anywhere else yes is this so, illegal is it a crime yes yeah, it's, it's, it's a crime and it's illegal you, you know, buy your goat you take it home and you bring your local whatever or you kill it yourself and you handle it yourself you're saying that it's a crime yes because when you oh. go and buy an animal Joy. like that and you slaughter and Probably it's a suspected anthrax case, and you take it. You 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 can you, you can you 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 can die. So what all that we are saying is that we have to make sure that when we buy our animals, we take it to the designated slaughterhouses or facilities for them to be slaughtered. Through that process, we we carry out what we call the anti mortem before the slaughter. We look at signs of um, ill health. And then after the animals are sl slaughtered, we conduct a, a post-mortem to see that whether the animal on is each wholesome. each and every animal or each on random every, animals? Each and every an There's animal. There's supposed to be an AM and a PM yes. on each and every animal yes. slaughtered at designated points. Exactly. All right. But the AM, sometimes, if you don't have a holding pen, you cannot, you, you, you will not be able to do it. So realistically, Doc... Yeah. Uh, because this is why I pulled up this directive from the Minister, yes. Minister of uh, Food and Agriculture. Do you have the capacity to supervise every single supervised or slaughter at these designated points? Okay, thank you. So Before we talk about those who are doing it in their backyards and whatnot, and their, their chop bars and all that. So uh, as a country, we need to pay particular attention, especially when we have these emerging diseases coming. We need to pay very particular attention to our slaughter are they, are facilities. They, is anthrax emerging? We've known about anthrax. Exactly. Okay. So, so what is the case? Is it that we don't have people with the requisite qualifications employed within the public service and structure to see to this uh, obligation? Let me call it that. Yes, yeah, so the people are there, mm. but the, the, the logistics and the facilities are actually not there. If you look at our slaughter facilities, 
a lot has to be done to uh, upgrade these facilities. Wow. Because if you look at the slaughter facility, sometimes it doesn't give you the opportunity to carry out a very good post-mortem or anti-mortem right. um, 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 on each animal. Okay, let me put you on the spot. I know per perhaps you may not be able to give me what I'm looking for, but yeah. this is a statement signed by the Minister of Food and Agriculture. Right? I'll see if I, I can engage the ministry directly. But yeah. therefore, on what basis do we give this confidence that now animals can be moved? All right? It says on expert advice. Yeah. Right? But generally, and in the wake of and before this outbreak, you're saying we lack the capacity to supervise as required. So, if so you when we say that it will be enforced and what's the other word? Ooh. Uh, people who fall foul of it will be prosecuted 